welcome back to this uh, uh, lecture series on uh, pulse width modulation for power electronic converters. So, incidentally uh, today we are getting started off with the last module of this uh, lecture series this is uh, 40 uh, this is a series of 40 lectures and uh, these 40 lectures are organized into 13 modules and uh, today we are going to get started off with the last module which is on uh, multi level converter or PWM for multi level converters. So, the different modules are organized like this I am just trying to recap so that you can have a quick understanding of what happened when and uh, you know if you have not followed all the previous lectures you can go on and catch up with a particular module and so on and so forth. So, what we started off with is actually overview of power electronic converters. In fact, we started off you know like how to board connect switches and how not to connect switches that you know we have to make sure that an inductive circuit does not get opened out or a capacitance does not get shorted and so on and so forth. So, we found that a DC DC converter it is essentially like it is a single pole double throw switch and we looked at DC DC converter, we looked at DC AC converter like voltage source inverters and current source inverters and we also looked at a multi level inverter let us say a neutral point clamped inverter or a flying capacitor inverter or so on and so forth. We discussed the power topologies, the power converter topologies how are the various switches connected and why they are connected the way they are that was essentially what we need to do this now. So, for this multi level converter if you are going to follow this afresh you need to basically go to this module and look at some of those lectures which introduce a multi level converter particularly a neutral point clamped converter or what is called as a diode clamped converter. So, you may have to look at that and then you have to restart of course, I will be uh, picking up the threads from there and we will have some discussions on that also. And the next module the second module is actually on the applications of voltage source converter now. So, we have a lot of voltage source converters DC AC conversion you know when we like we have IGBTs we have MOSFETs and IGBTs which are switches which are capable of conducting in both the directions and IGBT with an anti parallel diode can conduct in both directions and it can block voltage of one polarity. Such switches are ideally suited for voltage source converters and you use a voltage source inverter normally to drive motor drive for variable speed you know sp speed drives that is a very important application. You also use voltage source converter for active PWM you know or active PWM rectification you try to rectify uh, you know at unity power factor and uh, the ensuring that the rectifier input currents are almost sinusoidal we will have sinusoidal plus and maybe high frequency ripple. So, that PWM rectification is another application of this and uh, we also have like things like static compensation and many grid connected applications are possible here. E we here we briefly reviewed the applications and we also looked at uh, you know um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, load models etcetera could be used and so on so forth now. So, these are actually this is for the first set of modules these are more general power electronic course modules. So, here we get particularly into PWM and some basics of PWM basics of PWM generation. So, in this we looked at Fourier series and have a harmonic components and symmetries y symmetries, y half wave symmetry, y quarter wave symmetry what happens and so on like in these two modules for, for example, uh, like half wave symmetry uh, leading to absence of uh, uh, even harmonics and uh, so on so forth. And in this model we particularly focused on low switching frequency PWM when you have very let us say two switching angles in a quarter cycle or three switching angles in a quarter cycle and so on you know selective harmonic elimination is one way. So, we looked at selective harmonic elimination we also briefly discussed offline optimal PWM and so we tried doing this module for one reason was like such low frequency PWM are applicable at high in for high power drives where the devices cannot switch at high frequency because every time it turns on and turns off there will be huge amount of energy loss. So, the device cannot go through several switching cycles and they, that is one reason. The other reason is more academic or from the learning point of view it is good to learn this well and you know you can grasp several of the fundamentals here and therefore, we go about doing it now. These low frequency PWM which we had uh, done for two level inverter are certainly applicable to three level inverter that is one reason I am talking about it now. And these ideas like what we said about half wave symmetry and uh, quarter wave symmetry and things three phase symmetry and so on that we discussed here are all equally applicable here also. In the in the case of two level inverter if you look at the pole voltage you may have only two levels like plus VDC by 2 and minus VDC by 2 here your pole voltage will be more detailed it will have plus VDC by 2 0 and minus VDC by 2 nevertheless the same principles are equally applicable. 
and if you can generate low switching frequency selective harmonic elimination for multi level inverter there have been a lot of work on this though I am not going to be specifically spending much time I mean um, discussing um, uh, this on that um, uh, um, selective harmonic elimination for multi level. So, whatever has been discussed for two level the same principles could very well be extended to multi level now. This is an important module triangle comparison based PWM. So, particularly sinusoidal PWM and then different kinds of common mode injection now. So, we would look at how to extend this sinusoidal PWM to this case of three level inverter. So, that is one important topic that we will anyway take up for discussion and once you do the sinusoidal PWM it is also possible for you to add certain common mode and compare them with that that is also possible. So, that is also something we can look at. So, the other thing that we need to do is space vector based PWM. So, what we will do first we need to understand the various voltage vectors produced by 3 level inverter there is a big difference here now. Earlier in a 2 level inverter you had a few switching states there are 3 legs in 2 level inverter also there are 3 legs and 3 level inverter also there are 3 legs because we are talking of DC to 3 phase AC conversion the number of legs is same. In a 2 level inverter while there are only 2 complementary switches in a 3 level inverter there are 4 switches 2 pairs of complementary switches rather and in a 3 level inverter your pole voltage can be plus VDC by 2 0 or minus VDC by 2 in, 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 a, in a 3 level inverter if you look at the voltage space vectors an inverter can produce that will be many more than what can be produced by a 2 level inverter. In a two level inverter there are 8 inverter states 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 here there are 27 inverter states 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. So, that means there are many voltage space vectors. So, today we would look we would see what are the various voltage space vectors produced also and we will try and see like this triangle comparison PWM when you consider sine triangle PWM for example and one interesting thing is it is not unique when you extend sine triangle PWM from 2 level to 3 level it is not unique. There are several ways of extending which actually can lead to different PWM methods which have where whose waveforms might have different harmonic properties. So, we would like to see the see switching sequence for uh, some of them. So, we would look at in terms of the inverter voltage vectors most probably in the next lecture we would look at the space vector based PWM for 3 level inverters in greater detail. So, this second set of of course, modules which uh, actually dealt with PWM generation this is all for 2 level inverter. Once we understand what is a 3 level inverter and once we understand this it is possible for us to extend many of these to 3 level inverters. So, then the third set of modules were more about the analysis more analytical part in an inverter now here the focus is not really on the fundamental voltage in the earlier case we learnt how to modulate the inverter so that we get the desired fundamental voltage here we are kind of evaluating if there are different PWM methods if there is a particular PWM method particular load how do I calculate the RMS current ripple if there are two different PWM methods how do I compare the RMS uh, uh, current ripple the burden of the discussions were actually you know that that is what was the focus of the discussions. Of course, many of them were not in such detail as could be done in a regular classroom, but I tried providing enough uh, inputs and also give references so that it you know it would be possible for you to do things yourself and I am hoping that in the uh, assignment uh, sets and all that you know they, they will also those homework problems might also be of some help to you to understand these concepts better. The third set of modules is more analytical <coughs> we look at how much is the current ripple for example, in the AC side and we look at what is the DC link current that is flowing on the DC side of the inverter and this is closely related to the capacitor because the DC component of the DC link current comes from the DC supply say the rectifier and the ripple component of the DC link current most of it flows through the DC capacitor and that determines the RMS current through the capacitor that determines the power loss in the capacitor that determines the heating in the capacitor and the life of the capacitor and therefore, this DC link current is something very very important from the capacitor point of view. So, we tried having a detailed discussion on the DC link current also of course, these are all short modules everything or 2 or 3 lectures uh, each of these modules, but I have tried to give a certain amount of fundamentals uh, principles which are needed for carrying out these analysis. And one other thing is specifically in the context of motor drive is the pulsating torque these are the all the effects of harmonics the harmonics cause harmonic currents and therefore, a current ripple the harmonics also cause harmonic fluxes and the fundamental flux and harmonic current and again the fundamental current and harmonic flux interact to produce pulsating torque. So, we discussed this pulsating torque for a single I mean for low switching frequency case and also for the high switching frequency case. So, for the low switching frequency case we try to evaluate the fifth, seventh harmonic voltages etcetera we try to look at the sixth harmonic torque 
of torque for example and how you could evaluate specific like harmonic torques like 6, 12 etcetera and we also looked at the possibility of eliminating say something like 6th harmonic torque or 12th harmonic torque by appropriately selecting the switching angle. And in the high frequency case where you know we try to look at it as the integral of error voltage, we, we considered the error voltage vector and we try to integrate that to get the stator flux ripple vector and we use the q axis component of that uh, to do this job here ok alright. So, what we are going to do is the evaluation of the inverter loss is the next important thing from a practical point of view which is what also something that we did now. And this inverter loss is interestingly that you know the basic ideas of conduction loss and switching loss etcetera would actually apply to a 3 level inverter also. So, what we will see is in a 2 level inverter if you are looking at conduction loss there are only 2 transistors I mean and two with anti parallel diodes. So, for a particular direction of current it is only this one transistor other diode they conduct alternately and whereas, so, so there is always one device conducting in a leg at any point of time whereas, you find that in a 3 level inverter you will find that 2 devices are conducting at any point of time. So, the, the loss to that extent conduction loss is going to be more on the, on the other hand in the switching loss you know whenever an in, inverter switches if the inverter is a 2 level inverter the switch is going to be switching a voltage of VDC <coughs> whereas, as we will see here it will be switching only a voltage of VDC by 2 and therefore, the switching energy loss could actually be lower. So, there are some reasons that when you go to fairly higher switching frequencies a 3 level inverter might lead to lower switching loss than the you know 2 level inverter or the overall power conversion loss can also be lower than what you can actually get with a 2 level inverter. So, sometimes for power quality kind of applications you could consider doing this and there are actually comparative studies are also available. I would try to indicate some of these references to you uh, maybe in the next lecture and the last uh, next 2 lectures on this particular topic now. So, we also in the, this in the, this in the fourth set of modules we try to look at the inverter dead time and what effect it happens now. <coughs> Here also you have the same inverter dead time is required there in, in a 2 level case you had 2 complementary devices. So, you need a dead time between the 2 the outgoing device is switched off first and the incoming device is uh, switched on later. So, there is a time delay of TD introduced between that e here in a 3 level inverter you have 2 pairs of complementary devices and uh, you know again in the outgoing device should be switched off first and then the incoming device is later now with certain amount of thing you can actually do this dead time analysis for here also, but that is something that we are not going to really look at. Again we go in for this Venton for over modulation this over modulation you know what we achieve is uh, from sine triangle PWM when we go to common mode injection we are able to increase the voltage by 15 percent. We can again increase like from 0.5 VDC or some 78.5 percent of 6 step voltage we come to 90.7 percent using carry common mode injection alone from 90.7 to 100 percent of the 6 step voltage we will need over modulation that is something that we discussed in the last module. The same philosophy can actually be used with certain modifications to a 3 level inverter also, but in 3 level inverter you know for in a 2 level inverter with over modulation you can increase it from 90.7 percent to 100 percent nearly 10 percent increase in the voltage is possible through over modulation whereas, that percentage increase could actually be a little lower with uh, this and you know uh, of course, there are th those algorithms that I have mentioned can can be expanded uh, some of them have been extended and some can be extended to over modulation uh, uh, of 3 level inverter. So, if necessary we can also do that. So, but we would be focusing on this. So, this present module is on PWM for, for multi level inverter. So, we will take a look at a multi level inverter and we would look at the pole voltages the inverter states and the voltage vectors that are being produced by a, a multi level inverter. Then we look at sinusoidal PWM for 2 level and how do you extend sinusoidal PWM from 2 level to 3 level inverter and we look at some 2 3 interesting possibilities and we will make a comparison of them. And then we will go on to space vector based PWM for multi level inverter and possibly look at uh, some advanced bus clamping PWM. This so, like we had the PWM methods we had the continuous uh, B, uh, PWM methods we had the discontinuous or bus clamping PWM methods for 2 level we also can have them for the multi level inverter. So, such things have also been researched just like we have the advanced bus clamping PWM methods for the 2 level inverter it is possible for us to have advanced bus clamping methods for 3 level inverter also. There have been one or two recent publications uh, in that regard I would also give an indication to you in that particular direction ok. So, now we move on to our you know this lecture number 38 which is on PWM for 3 level neutral point clamped inverter this is the first lecture. So, we will have 
three such lectures like this. So, I call this PWM for three level neutral point clamp inverter 1 all right. So, now we have this two level voltage source inverter and uh, as I said before this thing is a single pole double source it is a voltage source inverter the source is a DC voltage and it is an inverter it is expected to produce AC voltage here now. The loads are expected to be inductive and therefore, you find that the pole is connected every leg is a single pole double throw switch and the pole is connected to one of the load terminals because it makes sure that the inductive currents do not get you know uh, opened the, you know there, there is always a path for the inductive current to flow through. And the DC side is a stiff voltage source you have a voltage source here and there is capacitance to supply this additional ripple component and so on. So, this is voltage stiff and the voltage stiff component is coming across the two throws. So, there is no possibility of it getting shorted. So, the, the inductive load does not have a possibility of getting opened out and this does not have a possibility of getting shorted that is why the poles as you might recall are connected in series with inductive loads and the throws are connected across voltage stiff elements such as voltage source or capacitors now. So, this is a single pole double throw switch and again another single pole double throw switch for the y phase leg and single phase double throw switch for the b phase leg. So, we realize this using a device which can conduct in both directions, but can block with only one polarity where this is positive with respect to this you want me to write you can do this now this is something which we have already done whereas, the conduction can be in both directions. So, we have such devices and such devices are used in voltage source inverter. If you are going to the current source inverter you will need the complementary I mean you will need the dual of this a current source inverter would require a switch which can block voltages of two polarities, but may be conduct current in only one direction all right. So, this is a voltage source inverter and it is realized using a single pole double throw switch as I have shown here all right. Now, we need a multi level converter what we do is a single pole double throw there is no there is a pole why there is this pole this is a load terminal is connected here and you are you, you used a single pole double throw. So, that you had an capable you know you could apply either plus uh, this uh, VDC by 2 measured with respect to O or minus VDC by 2 measured with respect to O at R. So, your waveform quality can be improved if you can also connect R to the midpoint O that is one of the ideas now. So, you have an option of either connecting it to the positive bus or this DC midpoint or negative bus earlier the DC midpoint in a two level inverter is not available for making an electrical connection. So, here it is available for making an electrical connection and in fact, sometimes load current may flow into or out of this particular point ok. So, you have single pole triple throw switch and that is what we call as a three level inverter. Of course, you can consider single pole four throw switch and that could be called as a four level inverter again single pole five throw switch that can be called as a five level inverter again you have to be a little careful uh, when you talk about three level here we say three levels because the pole voltage can have three different levels plus VDC by 2 0 or minus VDC by 2. So, there are some authors who would count the number of levels let us say in R and Y if you look at R and Y you will have five different levels because it can be plus VDC or it can be plus VDC by 2 or it can be 0 or it can be minus VDC by 2 between the two or it can be minus VDC. So, there are five different levels. So, sometimes you may find the same thing getting referred as five level inverter, but our convention is quite quite clear we say the number of levels we relate it to the number of pole voltages you look at the pole voltage and the possible levels of number of levels of pole voltages in the two level inverter there are only two of them possible plus VDC by 2 minus VDC by 2 here it is plus VDC by 2 0 and minus VDC by 2 hence we call it three level inverter. So, we realize this three level inverter we discussed the uh, uh, this is one of the lectures and uh, you know we, we we spent extensively on how to derive this and this is what is a single pole uh, triple throw switch realization that we finally, came up with. So, if the top two devices are on S 1 and S 2 are on the bottom two will be off S 3 and S 4 will be off and in that case R will be connected to 0.5 VDC. So, this is a pole getting connected to the top throw the, the pole getting connected to the bottom throw is again straightforward to see what you need to do is keep these two off and keep these two on. S 3 and S 4 on therefore, what you will get you will have this pole getting connected to the bottom throw. So, V R O will be now equal to minus 0 0.5 V D C earlier it was 0 0.5 V D C. Now, it is also possible for you to connect R to O what do you do you turn off S 1 again you turn off S 4 you turn on S 2 and S 3. So, 
R could establish a connection with O and through which path there are two different paths that would depend on the load current. For example, if the load current is in one direction, the load current could potentially flow like this or if the load current is in the opposite direction, it can actually flow like this. Let me draw that for your convenience. If the load current is in this direction, for clarity let me draw in this direction, then the load current can actually flow like this from the. On the other hand, if the load current is in the opposite direction, the load current could flow like this. I wanted to draw it in green. So, let me maybe I will erase that. Okay. Now, let me draw that in green. So, if the load current is in the opposite direction because it is an AC load you know. So, current can be in both the directions then you will see that it conducts like this this would be the direction of path. So, which transistor and which diode would conduct would actually depend upon the direction of current, but you need to keep both of them on now. So, there are three. So, in this case what will happen R gets connected to O and uh, you have your V R O is equal to V D C by 2. So, this O is um, sometimes called uh, the neutral D C neutral and hence the name neutral point clamped inverter because you have an ability to apply this there. And you are using these diodes which are called clamping diodes and uh, so, they, then since diodes are being used for connecting this midpoint to this midpoint, sometimes they are also called diode clamped inverter. So, these are all the alternate names that you will use now. Sometimes there are also cases where instead of these diodes active switches are also used. In that case somebody may call it as active clamped you know 3 level inverter, but that is something that we are not looking at now. So, we, this is called neutral point clamped inverter or 3 level you know diode clamped inverter or 3 level inverter these are be the different names now. So, if you can see this way <coughs> we have a capability of this there is a voltage source and this is the pole and there are 3 different throw voltages and this converter has an ability to apply the pole I mean the throw voltage any desired throw voltage at the pole irrespective of the direction of current that is an attribute of voltage source converters. Let us say the current is like this now you want this voltage to be applied you turn on these two. So, your current conduction will be like this through the transistors and it will go along like this now. If the current conduction is in the opposite direction then it would go like this and go back there. So, it is possible for you to conduct like this maybe I can draw that. So, for example, the conduction can be like this in the other direction the current conduction could be like this. So, this converter has an ability to apply either 0.5 VDC or 0 or minus 0.5 VDC at the pole regardless of the direction of the current at the pole. It can apply any of the throw voltages at the pole now the same way it is at the bottom thing also now. So, let us just summarize the whole uh, operation in, in terms of uh, a table. So, you have S 1, you have S 2, you have S 3, you have S 4 and you have the pole voltage V R O. Okay. So, now if S 1 is on and S 2 is also on S 3 and S 4 are off you get 0.5 VDC you get 0.5 VDC this is the voltage now. Again if you have S 1 is off S 4 is also off S 2 and S 3 are on then you get V R O is equal to 0. So, that is getting connected to that. So, you know this is uh, where uh, the um, you know um, pole voltage pole is getting connected to the DC bus midpoint. Again you have another possibility you have S 1 and S 2 are off and S 3 and S 4 are on in this case you are applying minus 0.5 VDC at the pole measured with respect to this point O. So, you have these possibilities now. So, you do not consider one of those possibilities what is that possibility keeping S 2 and S 3 off S 2 and S 3 off and S 1 and S 4 on because that means S 2 and S 3 are off means it is totally open the load is open which is not something that you want to do. So, you have this kind of possibility here. So, what can you identify here you look at S 1 and whatever is your S 1 S 3 is complementary to that if S 1 is high S 3 is low if S 1 is low S 3 is high. The same way you can see S 2 and you can see S 4 they are also complementary with one another. 
Therefore, you can say that S1 and S3 are complementary and S2 and S4 complementary. This is the reason I told you that you know in a two level inverter you have one pair of complementary switches, here you have two pairs of complementary switches now. So, there it is suffice for you to generate one gating signal and the other gating signal would come by taking its complement. Here you have to generate two gating signals maybe for S1 and S2 and S3 would come by complementing S1 and S4 would come by complementing S2. So, you need to produce two gating signals and that is going to significantly change. So, earlier in sine triangle PWM for two level inverter you could compare one sine wave with one triangle. Now, you cannot have one sine wave with one triangle because you have to produce two signals. So, it has to be like one sine wave with two, two carriers which is what we look at and sometimes it can also be with two sine waves with one carrier ok. So, this is something that we will look at here. So, S1 and S2 and so you, you, you know you need this kind of a um, um, logic. So, we need to generate S1 and S2 for example and S3 and S4 can be generated as complements of S1 and S2 respectively ok. So, if you look at the instantaneous pole voltages just we have been discussing it can be 0. When would it be 0? So, when both you know like uh, when the pole R is connected to O by the middle two switches being on then V R O is equal to 0. The same way V Y can be 0 if the middle two switches in the Y phase leg are on. Again if the middle two switches in the B phase are on and the extreme two are off you get V B O is equal to 0. So, this is something different from the two level inverter and this plus or minus V D C by 2 is similar to what you had in a two level inverter except that you have to keep both S 1 and S 2 on and S3 and S4 off for plus VDC by 2. For this minus VDC by 2 you must have S3 and S4 both on. So, there will be two switches will be connecting it could be two transistors or the two anti parallel diodes that could be connecting when you are really doing this now. The instantaneous pole voltages are 0 plus or minus VDC by 2, 0 plus or minus VDC by 2 and so on. So, when I write VDC by 2 you can inherently see that I am ignoring the device drops just as we have been doing all through ok. Now, V R Y is what is V R Y the same kind of equation as before V R O minus V Y O and what is V R N one third of V R Y minus V B R assuming the load to be star connected balance load the neutral is not connected anywhere else. So, this is the kind of star connected balance load you assume here as before. So, the main difference that comes is in this value 0 otherwise it is similar to that of a uh, two level inverter. So, the analysis procedure from pole voltage you going to line to line and the line to neutral voltage on the load they are pretty similar now. So, now you have V R O, V Y O, V B O and they can from that you can get V R Y, V Y B and V B R and you can also get V R N, V Y N and V B N and V R N, V Y N and V B N can be used to obtain V alpha and V beta the same space vector transformation is valid because V R N plus V Y N plus V B N is equal to 0 under this condition you have V alpha is equal to 3 by 2 V R n as before and V beta is equal to root 3 by 2 times V y n minus V b n. The only difference would be in the possible values of V r n. Earlier in a two level inverter what are the various values of V r n possible? The various values of V r n possible would be 0 plus or minus V d c by 3 plus or minus 2 V d c by 3 whereas, more number of values would be possible here. For example, you may be able to look at plus or minus V D C by 6 and, and so on and so forth. So, you will have more number of values because V R O you have one additional value. So, V R Y you will have more additional. So, you have 3 possible values against 2 in case of 2 level inverter. So, V R Y you would have 5 different values it can be plus V D C by 2 let me just write it down here. So, V R Y would be able to take values like plus V D C and it will also be able to take minus V D C right because you know if V R O is minus V D C by 2 and V Y O is equal to plus V D C by 2 and V R Y can also take the values of plus or minus V D C by 2 and it can also take the values of 0. So, there are 5 levels this is why I said that sometimes authors may call this as a 5 level inverter because V R Y has 5 possible values now. Again next if you are trying to do V R N is equal to 1 by 3 times of V R Y minus V B R. So, you have different possibilities if you substitute one after the other you would be able to get many different possibilities. So, what are the different possibilities? So, V R Y itself has 5 possibilities V B R itself has 5 possibilities. So, let us look at some possibility if let us say V R Y is equal to plus V D C and V B R is equal to minus V D C in that case what you will have is you will have 2 V D C by 3 
this is similar to what we had in a 2 level inverter. So, let me write down one possible value is 2 V DC by 3 as in the case of a 2 level inverter. Again it can be plus or minus if V R Y can be minus V D C and V B R can be plus V D C. So, you can have plus or minus V D C by 3 as you had in a 2 level inverter. Now, let me say uh, V R Y is equal to plus V D C whereas, V R Y is equal to minus V D C by 2. So, in that case what you will have this is V D C and this is minus of minus V D C by 2 will be 3 V D C by 2. So, that will be a, a only equal to V D C by 2 I hope I am not making any mistake this is V D C and minus of minus V D C by 2 is 3 V D C by 2. So, you will have V D C by 2 as your V R N. So, it is also possible that you can get V D C by 2 as a possible value and it can be plus or minus V D C by 2. So, you can also look at plus or minus V D C by 3. So, you would also be able to look at plus or minus V D C by 6 and you will also be able to get 0. So, if you look at this interestingly what you will get here is if you need 2 V D C by 3 that is possible with only one possibility that is V R Y has to be V D C and V B R has to be minus V D C otherwise this is not possible 2 V D C by 3 is not possible. But if you look at V D C by 2 then you can look at a possibility of this being plus V D C and this being minus V D C by 2 or you can also look at the possibility of this being V D C by 2 and this being minus V D C. So, you have multiple possibilities that lead to here now. And if you look at the possibility of V D C by 3 you will see that there are more number of possibilities which will give you V D C by 3 and even more number of possibilities for V D C by 6 and finally, for 0 you have you know more possibilities in the sense it both can be V D C that is one possibility both can be V D C by 2 that is another possibility second and both can be 0 that is third possibility both can be minus V D C by 2 that would be the fourth possibility both can be minus V D C that would be the fifth possibility you have five different possibilities. So, the highest possible line to line voltage there is a unique possibility and when you go to slightly lower you know line to line voltage you have more possibilities as you go to lower and lower voltages you get more and more possibilities and 0 is where you have the highest possibility and this is a 3 level inverter you go to 5 level inverter or 7 level inverter you have many such possible states and many many possible states which will give you the same uh, voltage and these you know that is what is interesting. So, there are two different inverter states which can possibly give you the same line voltage and uh, multiple inverter states can give you that that is what gives us the leeway to design more and more PW methods. As far as the load is concerned it is going to look at what is uh, the voltage. So, if it is 0 the load does not care if this 0 has been achieved by keeping all the 3 poles at plus V D C by 2 or minus V D C by 2 or all 3 poles at 0. Again if the you know if V R Y may be plus V D C by 6 it can be you know V R may be at some level Y phase can be at some level B phase can be some level, but V R Y can be plus V D C by 6 and V Y B can be minus V D C by 6 and V B R can be 0 for example. So, there are many many possibilities that is a multiple inverter states lead to the same set of three phase output voltages you we need a particular output voltage that is what the load cares, but that is possible to generate using multiple sets of inverter states particularly when you are talking of voltages which are low in amplitude. So, not close to V D C. So, this is what allows us to design many many P W M methods now. So, now if we have V R N available you can also do this. So, V R N and you have V Y N and V B N values they can be transformed into space vector domain 3 by 2 times V R N is your V alpha and uh, V y n minus V b n into root 3 by 2 is V beta. So, as you know what we did this this is the R y n b axis and this is the three phase axis and uh, these are the two phase orthogonal axis in the stationary reference frame alpha beta we call them alpha and beta and again if there are different authors might use different conventions. You basically have your V alpha as V n cos 0 plus V y n cos 120 plus V b n cos 240 and uh, that becomes uh, 3 by 2 times V r n when you have this condition V r n plus V y n plus V b n is equal to 0. And then you have this V beta, V beta is essentially V r n sin 0 which is 0 and V y n sin 120 which is same as V y n cos 30 plus V b n sin 240 which is same as V b n cos 150 and this becomes root 3 by 2 times V y n minus V b n. So, once you have V r n, V y n and V b n it is possible to calculate V alpha and V beta and these are the components of the vector. So, you can say V alpha square plus V beta square under root that will give you the magnitude of the vector tan inverse of V beta upon V alpha will give you the angle of the 
vector now. So, it is possible for you to calculate many of the inverted states. This is what we did for a two level case also. In the two level case, they are very, very clear. All the top switches are on is plus, plus, plus. So, here you will see all the three line to line voltages are 0, all the three line to neutral voltages V r and V y and V b are also 0 and you will get your V alpha to be 0, V beta equal to 0. The same story when you use minus, minus, minus that is all the three bottom are off. Whereas, if you use plus, minus, minus like here, you will see that you would have got excuse me. So, if you use for example, plus minus minus you will see that your V R n is 2 V D C by 3, this is a 2 level inverter and V Y n equals V B n equals minus V D C by 3 and this V R n, V Y n and V B n will give you V alpha is equal to V D C and V beta is equal to 0 and that is what is this vector, that is what is this vector. Now, let us say I am looking at this inverter state. Here V R O is minus V D C by 2, V Y O is plus V D C by 2 and V B O is equal to minus V D C by 2. On the other hand, if I look at V R N, I will find that V R N is minus V D C by 3, V Y N is 2 V D C by 3 and V B N is equal to minus V D C by 3. So, the 3 will sum up to 0, V R O plus V Y O plus V B O will not sum up to 0, whereas V R N plus V Y N plus V B N will sum up to 0. So, this is what you will have. So, minus 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 you add all this and the, you get this. So, this is one vector. So, this will actually give you V alpha is equal to minus 0.5 V D C and V beta is equal to root 3 by 2 V D C you get this now. You can do a similar analysis for all these and you get these active vectors. You will always find that they have a magnitude equal to the active vectors will have a magnitude equal to V D C. This is according to our conventions. The way we have defined V alpha and V beta here, you go by that you get magnitude V D C. This is also of magnitude V D C and this angle is 60 degree. So, this is what we did in a two level inverter. So, the same transformation, but different sets of three phase pole voltages that is all that matters now. The, the different three pole voltages will give you to different sets of line to line voltages and different sets of line to neutral voltages and therefore, different sets of voltage vectors in a three level inverter which is what we are going to see now. So, the three level inverter you have particular cases. So, like for example, you take the first case that is R phase top is connected to the top throw that is the top two switches are on, Y phase the bottom two switches are on and the B phase also bottom two switches are on. So, here you have V R O is equal to plus V D C by 2, V Y O is equal to minus V D C by 2 and V B O is equal to minus V D C by 2. This is same as what you had in a two level in inverter. So, the inverter state is we call it as plus minus minus and the vector is the same thing it will be V D C. So, this is your alpha axis and this is your beta axis. Maybe it may be good for me to indicate uh, alpha axis and beta axis this is what is our alpha axis and this is our beta axis. So, you have the same thing of your V alpha is equal to V D C and V beta is equal to 0 for this case. So, you have this vector as we have drawn here now. Again all these states that I have shown here are common to two level inverter and the three level inverter. This means R phase top two devices are on, Y phase top two devices are on, B phase bottom two are on and the pole voltages are plus V D C by 2, plus V D C by 2, minus V D C by 2 which is possible for a two level inverter also in case of two level inverter also and the vector is the same the angle is the, the magnitude is V D C and angle is 60 degrees here. Again this minus plus minus is something which is common because you know this is again what you have with a two level inverter. So, again 4, 5 and 6 these are similar to what we had in a two level inverter. So, there are how many inverter states are there now? There are three possibilities. For example, R phase may be positive plus V D C by 2 or it may be connected to the DC midpoint 0 or it can be connected to the negative bus minus. So, there are three possibilities. Y phase has three possibilities, B phase has three possibilities. It is 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. There are 27 states. Out of 27 states, we have accounted for only 6 states. Now, if you look at for other states, for example, we let us say we have a state minus minus minus. So, what does it mean? In all the three legs, the bottom two devices are on. So, that means the line to line voltages are 0, the line to neutral voltages on the load are 0, therefore, V alpha, V beta are 0. I am showing it by a circle. I mean, this is a null vector. The same situation is obtained when even when you do 0, 0, 0. 
all the three phase poles are connected to the DC midpoint, the middle two switches are kept on in all this cases now. Again you connect it as plus 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 that is the top two switches are on in both the in all the three legs now. So, all of them will lead to this now. So, now you see a small difference earlier it was only minus 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 and plus 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 were available in a two level inverter and these were called the 0 states which you call as 0 and 7 we designated them as 0 and 7 minus 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 and plus 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 here all bottom devices are on here all the top devices are on. So, here you have all the bottom two devices are on, all the top two devices are on, all the middle two devices are on. So, you have these three 0 states now. So, we have accounted for 6 plus 3 9, there are still 18 more states are remaining now. So, what are those states now? See for example, let us say here it is all connected between plus and minus, all these states though you can connect it to 0, in these 6 states you find that the inverter leg is connected either to positive or to negative and not all of them positive, not all of them negative that is what you find. So, let us say we look at only those combinations where the inverter leg is either connected to positive or to 0 that is again possible. No? So, in that case what happens is the inverter the 3 level inverter reduces to something like a 2 level inverter whose DC bus voltage is VDC by 2 alright. So, let me just write that down now ok. So, I am looking at plus 0 0. So, what happens with plus 0 0? I am going to get an inverter state like this plus 0 0. This magnitude will be V D C by 2. Why? Because this is very similar to the case of a 3 level inverter, I mean the 2 level inverter, except that the D C voltage now is V D C by 2. So, the line to line voltages here are minus V D C 0, I mean V D C 0 and minus V D C. Here it is V D C by 2 0 and minus V D C by 2, that is all. So, you will have half of this now. Again, you can use that again that is you look at combinations where they are connected only between plus and 0. So, you get the other combination. So, if you have plus plus 0, here you may have minus plus 0 that will lead to a vector like this. Again, you will have not my I am sorry did I say yeah this is 0 plus 0 and here I have 0 plus plus and here I can think of 0 0 plus and here I can think of the state plus 0 plus. So, these are 6 inverter states where the legs are connected the midpoints are connected either to plus plus or 0. So, these are like similar to active states in a 2 level inverter, but whose DC bus voltage is V DC by 2 and so all these produce you know voltage vectors of length equal to V DC by 2 and their angles are 60 degrees as before. Now, if you have plus 0 0 what is R phases V DC by 2, Y phases 0, B phases also 0 the pole voltages are 0. You can the what is the line to line voltage? It is plus VDC by 2, VRY is plus VDC by 2, VYB is 0, VBR is minus VDC by 2. You can achieve the same thing if, for example, you use 0 minus minus. So, here again VRY will be plus VDC by 2, VYB will be 0, and VBR will be minus VDC by 2. So, they will result in the same set of 3 phase line to line voltages, and therefore, the 3 phase line to neutral voltages on the load again, therefore, the same voltage vector. Again I can look at the same I can look at 0 0 minus this leads to the same set of pole voltages this also leads to the same vector. Again I would have the inverter state minus 0 minus leading to the same vector. I will have minus 0 0 here I can have minus minus 0 here I can think of 0 minus 0. So, these are another 6 more vectors. So, these are combinations the where I have drawn in the red ink these are all combinations of 0 and minus. It is like I am having the 3 level inverter, but I am switching only between minus and 0. So, some legs may be connected to 0 some other the remaining legs will be connected to minus. So, these would be the active vectors. So, now how many have we been able to account for? We have been able to account for first the 6 outer vectors and then these 3 9 and then now 12 of them. So, about 21 of them we have accounted for. Now, how many inverter states are remaining? 6 inverter states are remaining. What are the inverter states remaining? The kind of inverter states remaining are 
of this nature like plus 0 minus this is what we have not considered till now or something like 0 plus minus or minus 0 plus and so on. So, what do these things stand for they actually one of them has plus V D C by 2 another one would have minus V D C by 2 the third one would have 0 that those you have 6 combinations will be available. So, if you take the first phase it can be either plus V D C by 2 0 or minus V D C by 2. So, the second phase can have 2 possibilities and third will have 1 possibility. So, you have 6 such states now. So, the question is where will be the vectors now. So, if you look at plus 0 minus V R Y is equal to V D C by 2 and sorry V Y B is equal to minus V D C by 2 and V B R is equal to uh, minus V D C. So, this is V D C by 2 V D C by 2 this is minus V D C from here you can calculate V R and V Y and V B and V alpha V beta and you can come up to that. So, there is no issues you can actually do it, but what you will find here is you see here plus minus minus and you see here plus plus minus and when you go for plus 0 minus this will actually be midway between the two it will be symmetric from this and what you will find here is that actually it will go like here. This would be the vector produced by plus 0 minus again this will be the vector produced by here the transition is from plus to minus. So, you look at 0 plus minus again here if you look at this this will be minus 0 plus and that would produce a vector like this and I miss something here. So, it will be minus plus 0 and that would be producing a vector like this. Then if you, you look at here this will be 0 minus plus like this now and then you look at here this the other fellow will be producing here this is plus minus 0. So, you can see some interesting observations here now there is this 0 state how many active vectors are here actually 27 inverter states are there these 6 states leads to 6 vectors they lead to 6 vectors are all of magnitude V D C by 2. Then there are 12 different inverter states which lead to 6 distinct active vectors of V D C by 2. So, 2 of them produce the same vector. Now, then you have 3 of them producing the same vector the null vectors there are 3 0 states they produce that and then there are these 6 active vectors which produce I mean active states producing 6 active vectors. So, whatever tip is found on the outer hexagon they correspond to 12 different inverter states and they produce 12 active vectors and that is what you find them there and the inner one there are 12 of them producing 6 active vectors totally and the innermost are 3 inverter states producing a single active vector. So, if you count the number of distinct active voltage vectors or voltage vectors you have 12 plus 6 plus 1 there are 19 distinct voltage vectors produced by 27 inverter states you see that there are lots of possibilities. In the case of a 2 level inverter you had only one possibility this vector can be applied either using this state or that state and that itself led to many PWM methods and that is the main reason why you had the bus clamping PWM method the common mode addition is mainly because of this and we further invented that you know like looked at I mean learned that uh, the active state can be applied more than once and so on or active state 2 can be applied more than once and that led us to the advanced bus clamping PWM method. Now, if you look at there are so many possibilities this can be applied through 3 different inverter states and all these vectors can actually applied by to using two different inverter states. So, a 3 level inverter gives you much more degrees of freedom I know much more you know lot more opportunities to explore and design new PWM methods than even a 2 level inverter does and we had with the 2 level inverter we could discuss the PWM methods for about 20 25 lectures you can see that you know we can discuss about PWM methods probably for 50 lectures, but that is not what we are going to do because the fundamental principles are many times common once you understand the fundamental principles for PWM for 2 level inverter and then you understand what is a 3 level inverter then you should be able to design reasonably good PWM methods for a 3 level inverter and therefore, we would be restricting it only to 3 lectures here all right. So, but you should realize that it gives lot of exciting possibilities there are so many so many possibilities of doing things now ok. Now, let me just give another more indication you will need a vector you know for example, so, let me say let me take this triangle let it is better that I choose get another color would this be all right ok. So, let us say I have this triangular region I have a tip falling here 
I have a reference vector whose tip falls here. So, now what happens is I can use the three nearest vectors this is what we are actually heading towards. Why does it give you a better waveform quality if you need to reduce uh, you know produce this vector using a two level inverter you have to use this null vector you have to use this active vector and use this active vector. Obviously, you will be using active vector 2 for the longest duration I followed by active vector 1 and then the null vector to produce this one. So, whenever you are applying you are never getting to apply this you are applying here, here and here and the error is very high particularly when you are applying active vector 1 the error between the desired vector and the actual vector is so long. Again when you are applying null vector the desired is so long. Now, you, since you have many more possibilities what you can do you apply the three closest vectors. So, you see that the error is so small here also the error is so small. So, this error voltage vector is nothing but the harmonics you know you have the ripple voltages in all the three phases. If you transform the ripples in all the three phases into the space vector domain that becomes your error vector again this error vector that gives your instantaneous error vector now the, your instantaneous error vector is low and therefore, it is integral the instantaneous stator flux ripple or the instantaneous current ripple is going to be low and that is the reason why the three level inverter gives you you know main reason gives you better waveform quality than that one now. Again you see that there are multiple possibilities for example, there are two different inverter states which you can use to apply this and that will give you a lot of opportunities to design PWM methods now. So, if you look at now we have looked at just the switches we have looked at the possibilities of pole voltages and so on. Now, we would look at the average voltages if you are looking at DC DC chopper what you are trying to see is you want to apply certain average voltage here you would want that same average voltage applied at the pole now this is pole average pole voltage. So, at the pole sometimes it is V in and sometimes 0 and what you, you do is you, you get certain average voltage. This average voltage will be constant against time because that is what you want in a DC DC chopper. So, this switches you will make sure that they, they normally power flows in one direction if this is a regenerative load like a DC machine you could actually make the switches conduct in both the directions and you can make this a regenerative chopper. So, you can make it a two quadrant chopper also. Now, what do you do how do you produce the PWM signals is by comparing this carrier with a modulating signal as we did before and the, mod, the duty ratios are constant now. What we need in case of uh, a three phase inverter is we would need this VRO average this pole voltage the average pole voltage now needs to be varied sinusoidally. We want to vary VRO average sinusoidally, VYO average sinusoidally and VBO average sinusoidally such that we will get VRO average as a sinusoid, VYB as a sinusoid and VBR as a sinusoid and all these three sinusoids will be balanced symmetric. So, if you want to produce VRO average if you lose a two level inverter you know we would we want this alternating. So, sometimes it will be positive sometimes it will be negative. If you want your VRO average something like 0 0.25 VDC in a two level inverter you could do this by connecting it to 0.5 VDC for most of the time and minus 0.5 VDC for a shorter duration of time. Whereas, if you want to do it with a three level inverter you do not have to use minus 0.5 VDC at all and this is 0.5 VDC and 0. So, you will get that 50 percent of the time you apply 0.5 VDC 50 percent you apply 0 you will get 0.25 VDC. So, what happens you know you are able to generate the same average voltage, but the instantaneous error is small here the instantaneous error as I pointed out even in the lectures on multi level inverter is so high whereas, here the instantaneous error is so small. So, the, the worst case instantaneous error is reduced and obviously, the flux thing is going to be reduced now it is this reduction in the error voltage error in pole voltage is what got reflected as the reduction in the voltage error vector in the space vector domain <coughs> all right. So, you can use like this. So, what we want to do is we actually want to vary this VRO average sinusoidally and VYO average to be another sinusoid at the same amplitude same frequency 120 degree later and VYO average also as another sinusoid. So, if you do this like that VRO average are all sinusoids they are all same amplitude same frequency 120 degree phase shifted then you will get your V y R y average like this and V y B average like this and this I am sorry is V B R average. So, this is V B R average. So, you will you will get the three phase line to line voltages like that. So, the same idea that you used in the sinusoidal PWM we can use here for two level inverter you can use three phase sinusoidal signals. The only trouble is they you cannot have single carrier as we will just soon see now. So, they are like MR, MY, MB and the VRO average is MR by VP times VDC by 2. So, you know we are not going into over modulation. So, MR and VRO are just have the same wave shape just scaled versions VRY average, VRN average and you know we know all this we have done this enough number of times before. So, you can achieve what you want. 
you can also add common mode like we did in two level inverter nothing stops us you by from adding this MCM to M MR MYMB to get your MR star MY star MB star and you try to produce VRO average which is a scaled version of MR star you produce VOU average which is a scaled version of MY star how you do it that is what we have to see you need to compare them with triangle what kind of triangle we have to see now but you can it is possible for you to produce once you produce like this you have your VRY average is VRO average minus VOU average and VRN average is just like this same as what it was in a two level inverter and you know all these are very similar now. So, once you have V r n average, V y n average and V b n average, you can always transform them into V alpha average and V bit average our standard space vector transformation. Of course, here the V r n average plus V y n average plus V b n average is equal to 0 is still valid now. So, in the the difference comes in the triangle for example, in, in, in the case of two level inverter there is one modulating signal and one triangle and there are other modulating signals Y b as well compared against the same triangle now, but the single triangle carrier would not suffice for you. So, what you do now is basically you have two different carriers is one way of doing it one way of doing it is you have the same r y b but now have level shifted carriers. So, you see that it goes between 0 and 1 and this goes between minus 1 and 0. So, they have two level shifted carriers now and uh, this comparison can give you some switching and this comparison can give you some other switching now. For example, your logic could be you take r phase here it is greater than both the carriers then you can say r phase both the top devices will be on. Now, here you let us say take some other case you take the R phase here. Now, R phase is lower than this carrier, but higher than this carrier. So, you can say in for R phase the middle two switches will be on and now you take R phase here it is lower than both the carriers here you can say that both the bottom devices will be on. So, this could be the switching logic by which you can come up and produce PWM waveforms. So, this can be done using two level shifted carriers this is one good way of extending sine triangle PWM for two level to three level and uh, you know it actually the harmonic distortion is also pretty good with this as we will see compared to other things now. So, as I just mentioned that you know you compare them with carrier and and uh, you know obviously these are high frequency carriers and uh, let me use a different color here yeah. So, these are high frequency carriers though I have shown the carrier to be a flow frequency for purpose of illustration. What I can also do is I can also have this phase shifted like this I can also have the carrier phase shifted no problem it will still work the fundamental voltage I will still get. So, one the, the two carriers are phase shifted from each other. So, what would be the effect of doing this now? So, you see that this is at some phase this is at some other phase may be phase shifted by 20 degree or 30 degree at the carrier frequency. This will not affect the fundamental, but this will impact the harmonics. So, sometimes harmonics may change for better and many times it may change for worse. One particular case of phase shifting is have the two carriers out of phase what I actually have is this is the original top carrier and this is the bottom carrier the two are actually out of phase in the from the picture you may not I mean I could have plotted probably using two different colors this black and this brown you would have known that. So, this is top carrier and this is uh, bottom carrier. So, you can do this now. So, what you will see here is you know uh, there is yet another before we go into that the you need two carriers. So, there are lots of studies have been done there is also some places where they have used two modulating signals and a single carrier that is also there in the literature I could give you the reference probably in the next lecture. Now, if you want to do this you see that there is no intersection between this and this again in this part this carrier and there is no intersection. So, what you can actually do is let us say you shift this fellow up you shift this fellow up what is this the R phase I have just shifted up. So, the R phase signal is like this now I can actually compare. So, this should be at 0 crossing. So, what I can do is I can ignore the totally the lower part I can ignore this part I can ignore this part I can have a level shifted thing which is like this and this part the sign is level shifted and you can see that the instance of comparisons all would not change if I do it properly you know I have not drawn it very clearly. So, it you can use it using a single carrier PWM also and you will see that when you can analyze the switching sequence which we will do it in the next class the switching sequence with for out of phase carrier and the switching sequence for in phase carrier would be actually different and you will find that the in phase carrier is better in terms of the voltage uh, error vector it will lead to lower voltage vector. I would leave this as a home exercise for you I will come back and anyway do it in the next lecture. So, next lecture we can get started off uh, from this point and I thank you very much for your interest and your patience and I look forward to your continued participation in the next two lectures. Thank you very much.